Remember DLC? Of course you remember DLC. It's still being sold for your favorite games. Call of Duty still follows a yearly DLC cycle that helps pad the wait until the next big game. Ditto for Battlefield and even games like XCOM 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Fallout 4 which have season passes to provide additional content to players. However, an interesting trend has been emerging in recent months. It's not new by any means, but more developers are getting around to the idea of providing free content to their players. This was usually the domain of free-to-play games, titles like Path of Exile and Team Fortress 2 would offer new maps, challenges, loot, etc., but also include microtransactions for various purposes. With Halo 5 Guardians, we've seen 343 Industries provide new monthly content without charging players. A lot of these updates aren't really worth charging. For example, updates to add Forge Mode, Community Playlists for Forge Maps, Action Sack, Rift Ball, etc. aren't something fans should be paying money for. However, there have been new maps, wrecks, armor sets, assassination animations, weapon skins, and more that players can earn. A lot of that is locked behind wreck points. You can either earn the required number of points or simply spend real-world money on the same to pick up the best gold packs. In this case, it's a matter of time. Would you rather play the game for an extended period of time to net your ticket to the gold packs, or would you rather pay a price for immediate access? The random nature of packs along with their balanced use, many are cosmetic and the powerful weapons can't be used outside of Warzone, ensure this isn't pay to win. Another example is Homefront The Revolution. Though it will offer microtransactions for various unlocks, there will be a year's worth of free DLC for players to enjoy after launch. Overwatch will provide free content in the form of heroes and maps, though it's still undecided on its microtransaction model. Blizzard has otherwise been providing new substantial content for free on Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls since its launch without charging any additional money for the same. Despite being able to purchase everything in Warframe for enough money, you can easily play the game and grind out the stuff you want without spending a dime. Free content isn't easy to manufacture though. Just look at Bungie's Destiny. The Festival of the Lost event in October simply added more cosmetic masks that players could wear. Sparrow Racing League was new but offered only two tracks. The upcoming Crimson Days is just a fancier mode for doubles in PvP. Bungie has been unable to create new story missions and strikes, much less rotate the vendor stocks since the release of The Taken King. That's because it takes money to make content. So how are other developers pulling it off so well? At this point, microtransactions are becoming less about pay to win and more about pay to support. Granted, many commercial games don't ask you to support them through microtransactions. 343 Industries has actually taken to donating a huge chunk of the money it earns from rec packs to the Halo World Championship prize pool, thus fostering the growth of the Halo competitive scene further. If you paid money for the game, you don't really have to do more to enjoy the game. As it stands, free content is a way to ensure players feel taken care of and motivated to not only continue playing, but to invest in future paid content. It's not only about giving players something to do, but showing that developers are listening. So if you spot future titles going this route and pushing microtransactions, just think about whether it's worth your time first and your money second. What are your thoughts on free content in video games and big AAA titles including microtransactions as a result? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.